So quite an important specimen here is this fish specimen, which is a barracuda and normally found in the warmer waters of the West Indies. This particular specimen was caught in the UK off the west coast of Cornwall in 2003. So a case for global warming, perhaps. My name is Patrick Campbell and I'm the Senior Curator of Reptiles here at the Natural History Museum in London. My role here as curator is to safeguard and manage and preserve our collection of reptiles which comprise about a quarter of a million specimens and to make it available for researchers all around the world. So I've always had a passion for science at school and I've also had a passion for visiting museums and galleries as a young child, so my current role actually combines the two beautifully. I had no idea that there were so many specimens behind the scenes at the museum when I visited as a child. There are over 300 scientists that work here, and all working on different aspects of natural history. We have 80 million specimens collected over a period of about 300 years plus by iconic collectors such as Charles Darwin, on the Beagle Voyage, we have specimens from the Cook Voyage. So it's a very important collection. Some of the specimens that have been collected have now gone extinct. So that's another reason why it's important. The collection then is a snapshot almost of what was there at the time it was collected and all the data that goes along with it. This is the Komodo dragon and it's the largest land lizard in the world. So preserving an animal of this sort of size and depth is quite a feat. It normally comes in either frozen or fresh, and if frozen, then it will need to be defrosted for a number of days or even uh, a number of weeks. And then it is put into vat or formaldehyde but prior to that, it needs to be injected with formaldehyde directly into the inner organs of the animal so that the inner organs can also be fixed properly. Otherwise, what you will get is an animal that's fixed on the outside but is rotting away on the inside. So we use lots of long needles to pierce the animal in the inward parts to get the formaldehyde right inside into the organs. We then would rinse the animal in water and take it up through the stages of alcohol, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50% IMS, and then it's placed finally into a vat of alcohol at 80%. We get a lot of inquiries from all around the world, um, from people in the field, uh, who've been in the field, who've collected something which they think is new. And uh, it also gives me the opportunity to collaborate occasionally with some of the researchers abroad. So basically our work here at the Natural History Museum is helping the world and us and then the world understand natural history and the natural environment better. I love my job. The opportunities it's given me to travel the world, to learn, because you're always learning in science. Uh, you don't know it all coming in of a morning and opening my computer and laptop or whatever it may be is always an adventure because you have absolutely no idea what sort of inquiry you're going to encounter. So it could be from somebody who's found a bone on the beach somewhere in the UK who has no idea from which animal it comes and they want it identified to someone finding uh, what they think is a new species of reptile in the forest somewhere out there in Kenya and contacting us for advice as to what to do next.